this is a self-portrait and you're not afraid to to make yourself look really silly hmm. Oh, <laughs> sorry, that's that's no, what no, I, no, I'm sorry. Well, this is uh, honest. This is the honest. This is honest. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, I can imitate it for a uh, you know self uh, portrait shot, uh. something like that face, like uh, you know, ex exactly the same. Yes, yes. I could see up close what you mean by the honesty in the self portrait because your nose hairs, <laughs> each one, <laughs> they're quite apparent. <laughs> This is a symbol that has been a Takashi Murakami icon for mm. over a decade. Mm. How did this symbol come about? I got the technique from the skull painting. This is a test, experimental stuff. Mm. So, but uh, that's why we spend the time like over one year mm. to many layers. So, face is happy, but uh, actually, you know, when I was painting, it's super unhappy. This technique is, uh, you know, first time to look like a sticker stuff. Yes. So, but this is, uh, everything is handmade. Mm. So that means that uh, we have to training for the stuff, like two, three years. Mm. So that is uh, also really painful. It looks like a sticker, but it's not. Yes, the hand paint. That's incredible. Yes, yeah, super painful. And a few people can do that. Mm. But mostly the, you know, ladies. <laughs> no, no, guys cannot. Now your work has also been described as very psychedelic, but you have said that you don't do drugs. So where do the visions come from? Oh, that touches on a painful part of my story. When I was doing painting as a freshman in university, an older female student came and told me that I severely lacked a sense of color. It just so happened that her boyfriend was known for the use of outstanding sense of color in the Nihonga field and she was boasting about it, though I have no idea why. It's true. I used to always wear brown clothing, and even now, look at me, I'm wearing moss green. I really hadn't been exposed to many different colorful things until then. Now you can imagine, I was hoping to make a living as a painter, and how upset that comment made me. From that day on, I started studying the fundamentals of color. When I arrived in New York, my works were received very well, so I went on to reinforce that element in my later works. In 2007, you designed the cover to the Kanye West album, Graduation, and you also directed the music video for the song Good Morning and you depict Kanye West as this DeLorean driving teddy bear. It's, it's, it's pretty cute. Um, can you describe what was it like to collaborate and work with Kanye West? Kanye West was the first contact with Kanye West. I first got a phone call from an editor of a music magazine asking if I knew Kanye West, so I replied I didn't. He said Kanye West wanted to see Murakami's Hereupon, the sculpture with huge breasts, and asked if it was ready in my studio. It actually was in my storehouse and not in the studio, but I thought another fun collaboration could start from this, so I welcomed them. They came the next day, and we took Hereupon out and got it ready for Kanye West to have a look. As soon as he arrived, without even saying hello to me, he was carried away by the sculpture, taking photos with his camera. Everyone, including his mother, manager and others, were taking his photos, walking around the studio. When I gave him some of my merchandise as a gift, he was like this while taking them. And they left, and that was it. I was quite disappointed, as it seemed like no collaboration came from it. But then, after a month, they returned to us to see if we could do anything together, saying that they were definitely going to meet us the next time they went to Japan. That's when we started speaking about a collaboration for an album jacket, a music video, and so forth. When we talked, he would look like this, and give us ideas. Then I would take it in and respond to them. That's how it went. In 2009, you worked with another hip-hop star, Pharrell Williams, um, in our project called The Simple Things. And it's Pharrell's favorite things, like a bag of Doritos or a Pepsi can, 
but encrusted with precious gems and all put inside the mouth of a Murakami monster. Um, what was the meaning of it? Pharrell asked me to create a showcase for the jewel-toned art piece he had created. The order was to produce a showcase, so initially I was coming up with different square box shaped designs, but I started to think that it didn't fit. Then after the fall of the Lehman Brothers, and amidst the financial crisis, people were starting to cast a doubt over the culture of mass production, Pringles, those type of things. So I thought I'd better package this piece with a bit of critical tone, rather than celebrating that culture. That's why something like a symbol of a Japanese character is devouring the gems. When I made the twist in what I presented him, something different to what he initially ordered, he was really happy, and we went ahead with the production. Now, the simple things ultimately sold for $2.8 million. Um, do you think the buyer understood the intended meaning of the piece? Well, I am an art collector too, and I can say when you buy an art piece, it's like falling in love with it. Once you want it, you simply can't hold your feelings, so understand the meaning behind it or not. So I guess the buyer did fall in love with it. Um, 2012 in Doha, you presented a 100 meter long painting uh, depicting the suffering of the Japanese people after the Fukushima nuclear disaster. How has that disaster affected you as an artist? I think the tsunami disaster really made intellectuals in Japan stop and think. And I had that realization as well. I dared to call the Japanese culture super flat, whereas the reality wasn't that simple. I stopped and realized how shallow my thinking was. But as someone that can influence others, I thought, I have to do the best I can. Then what can I do? After eliminating what I couldn't do, and focusing on what I could do, it came down to creating the huge painting, Gohayaku Rakan. What's depicted there is the superstition of the gods that are believed to keep off disasters and diseases being worshipped in the Edo era. With that theme in mind, the 100 meter long piece was created. It sounds like you're at a point of, of personal evolution as an artist. What will be your next big project? What I'm working on now is a film for public release. On the surface, it's a mere monster movie, but the theme goes deeper. The boys and girls in confusion after the Fukushima disaster make their way out on their own to hold on to hope and build a future. I'm working to get it released by next spring. Well, Takashi Murakami, your work is dazzling and it's also very honest. So thank you for joining me here on Talk Asia.